Yo, hello my lovely! Mm, welcome back to my channel! Haven't seen this set? I'll link it up in the cards! <laughs> hello my lovelies! Welcome back to my channel. Sorry about that intro, I just couldn't resist with that type of music going on. So today's video is focusing on lifting and all the factors which could possibly contribute to it and what you can do to stop it and or if you can't stop it because let's face it some clients no matter what you do they always get lifting you can at least minimize their type of lifting. So I'm just removing all the caviar beads and all the Swarovskis from this old set and I'm going to examine the nails and see how much lift there is by pushing on the free edge and seeing if the back part lifts up at all which in this case it hasn't. So first things first you push the cuticles back and then you need to clean the cuticle off the nail plate. I'm using a cuticle bit to do that and my drill is set on a very low speed. The advantage to using a cuticle prep bit as opposed to a hand file is that you can remove cuticle off the nail plate extremely close to the eponychium without damaging the skin. It's very thorough and leaves the nail plate free from cuticle. When maneuvering the e-file bit around the eponychium, be sure to use a light pressure. Don't be excessive with the pressure as it is possible to carve out into the nail plate and cause damage. Also, make sure to move from right to left if you're right-handed and left to right if you're left-handed. So now I'm just going to use my carbide bit to actually remove the clear shellac that's on there along with the coloured tips and the coloured design that's on the nails. I should have done this first before starting the cuticle prep but you know sometimes we do things in the wrong order but that's okay. <laughs> if I zoom in closer on the nail you can see the small amount of lifting around the arch of the acrylic. You can easily identify lifting because it is always a different colour to the rest of the acrylic. So now I'm going to use my carbide bit and spot remove this lifting. As you may know, you never use carbide bits on the natural nail. So you need to position the bit just beyond the point where the lifting ends and the attached acrylic begins. As I'm slowly working away at removing the lifting, you can see the groove which I'm actually forming by thinning out the acrylic between those two points. So I'm continuing in this manner up until I can remove all the acrylic. I'm moving slowly and steadily this footage that you're watching is in real time I haven't sped it up or slowed it down at all so bit by bit I continue up until it is all gone and then I'm where I need to be so this is what the nail needs to look like at this point just remove the cuticle from the nail plate and remove the lifting now we need to buff the nail and the acrylic as well so that's going to be the next step but before I do that I want to get the rest of the nails up to speed with this one and then I can move on and do the next step for all of them as well so again I'm just removing the design using my carbide bit so here I'm swapping over to my cone carbide bit because I wanted to show you how to remove it using this type of bit as well it's actually a lot easier to use this type of bit because of the point and you can actually really get into those side walls and remove that lifting easier than with the um, safety bit that I was using before if you remember from when I did this set about a month ago you'll remember that I laid down a layer of clear acrylic first before I did the cover pink this is the exact reason I prefer to put clear down before I put any colored acrylic on the nail because when it comes to filing at the next appointment you can see when you're getting close to the nail plate and you can ease up the pressure on your e-file. Sometimes as you're filing away at the lifting it appears to get bigger rather than smaller. The reason for this is because you're thinning out the bulky part of the acrylic and it's making the extent of the lifting visible. This means you need to reposition your carbide bit further back into the acrylic to be able to remove the lifting safely. This is what happened here with this middle finger. As I was filing what I thought was lifting, I realized further in that there was more lifting. So I positioned my e-file a bit further into the center of the nail to remove that lifting nice and safely. So I've gone ahead and completed the rest of the nails, removing all the lifting with my carbide bit. And now I need to swap over to my e-file with a sanding band and prepare the nail and get it ready for acrylic application. The way I like to work my sanding band is to file all the acrylic part first and then I can move on to the natural nail plate. I like to start from the right side of the side wall and then work my way over to the left side of the side wall. The sanding bit also helps smooth over that fine white line of lifting that was left behind which the carbide bit just can't remove without damaging the natural nail plate. So as you can see now after I remove the dust 
There's no fine white line between the nail plate and the acrylic where it begins. And just by wiping over the nail using a lint-free wipe with some acetone on it, you can see the extent of the nail prep which has been done. There's zero cuticle left on the nail plate and there's zero lifting left from the acrylic. This is perfect to move on to the acrylic application step. So now on the ring finger, I'm showing you how to achieve the same result using just a hand file because I'm sure not everybody has an e-file or not everybody's comfortable working with an e-file. What's important to note when using a hand file is that you must use a 180 grit file. This is because you're going to work the file over the natural nail and you don't want to damage the natural nail of the client. And again, in a similar fashion that I did using the e-file, I'm doing using the hand file. I start by smoothing over the acrylic part first before moving on to the natural nail part. Using a hand file for around the cuticle area I find is harder in comparison to the e-file. I find the e-file is more thorough to get into the nooks and crannies of the cuticle area um, whereas the hand file because of the shape of it whether it's a boomerang file or this straight one that I'm using now I just find I can't get right into the folds of the nail but uh, you know you still do your best and you can get right up there as close as you can without hurting the client's skin and now to show you in comparison to the previous nail that I did I'm just going to dust off this nail and wipe it over with acetone and you can see the result is basically the same as using the e-file I just feel with the, uh, the hand file I just can't get right up close into the sidewall and the epinichium part of the nail. So to complete the prep part of this no lift application you need to dehydrate the nail and then prime as well. For clients which have persistent lifting and no matter what you do they lift constantly I suggest priming twice for them. When applying primer make sure not to touch the skin because some clients can be allergic to that. Okay so when it comes to no lifting in your sets as far as prep is concerned that's what you have to do. But it doesn't stop there. There is also the application of the acrylic which makes a difference in your lifting and also the filing of the acrylic at the end which will also make a difference if you get lifting or not. We'll cover those next. So here I'm showing you side on without using any acrylic but this is the motions that I do to get the acrylic bead nice and flat around the cuticle area. Now I'm applying the clear acrylic bead as usual because I'm going to be using a cover pink for this for this set. For this application I just apply it nice and thin there's no flattening of the back part of it it's just as thin as possible. So this is where the magic happens. If you take a look at the image on the right, you'll see the arch, how it starts nice and flat at the cuticle, bulges there where it's hollow in, in the nail and then moves down flat onto the free edge. This is how you need to apply the bead to make sure it's nice and flat around the cuticle area so you don't get any lifting. You also need to make sure that you do not touch the skin with the acrylic and if you happen to like I just did here you push it away with your brush and flatten it down onto the nail. Another useful tip with your cuticle application is to apply the bead as close to the cuticle as possible without touching it and then you letting gravity do most of the work. So you apply it nice and close to the cuticle then tilt the finger downwards and then the acrylic naturally will fall down the nail and then you basically guide it to where you want it to go. Sometimes if you don't have your acrylic to liquid powder ratio correct it will ooze onto the skin but like I said before use your brush push it away back onto the nail and then you'll be right. So as far as acrylic application goes, you need to keep those in mind and that will help you minimize and even eliminate lifting in your sets. So here you can see profile after my acrylic has dried how flush it is to the cuticle and it bulges there into the apex and then down flat into the free edge. Here I'm showing you the angle at which not to hold the e-file when filing the cuticle bit. You need to ease up on the angle otherwise you're going to start filing into the nail. This is a much more appropriate angle to file at the cuticle. I'm just showing you here different angles at which I move the file and the nail to file and get the perfect nail shape from all angles. And now that I've shown you with the drill off all the different angles at which I hold it, I'm going to show you in action how this actually works. My drill speed is set on low and I work slowly but surely over the surface of the nail as I explained before, angling it down into the cuticle but not too much as to eat away into the natural nail and then flattening it as I move over the apex and down into the free edge. 
To do the side wall of the nail, I turn the finger on its side and then angle my e-file in such a position where I can file smoothly from the cuticle down to the free edge. I repeat the process on the right side of the cuticle, but this time I move upwards. I keep repeating this process over and over up until from all angles of the nails at which I look at it, it is nice and smooth and perfect and flows beautifully. I make sure I pay particular attention to the cuticle and the filing that I do there. I don't want to over file so I don't give the client rings of fire, but then I don't want to under file so they end up getting lifting as well. Learning the perfect time to stop will only come with experience so make sure you get out there and practice, practice, practice. And for anybody who doesn't use the e-file to finish file, you can use a hand file. <laughs> How many times can I say the word file? So basically the same rules apply with regards to angling the file as it did for the e-file. Close to the cuticle, you angle the file into the nail, but not too much as to cause rings of, rings of fire. And then as you move over the apex and down onto the free edge, you angle the nail so you get that nice apex for, uh, profile to the nail. Finish filing with a hand file around the cuticle area is harder in my opinion. I personally do find it harder because of the arch of the cuticle and the uh, eponychium. Uh, I find it's too steep to get into those left and right side arches of the nail and sometimes you do end up cutting the client around the cuticle area because of this reason. Even if I use those boomerang files I still find I can't get a thorough results like I can with the e-file and the sanding band. Not to mention that a full day of hand filing clients I usually ended up cutting my skin as well because of the contacting that at the points of contact at which the file touched my finger. So I I definitely do not miss using the hand file at all. Let me know down in the comments if you prefer using the hand file or the e-file to finish file your set. Okay so we've definitely covered quite a lot in this video and I just want to recap in point form to drive the, the message home for you. So to minimize lifting in your sets you number one push your cuticles back. Number two use your cuticle prep bit to remove cuticle from the nail plate. Number three use dehydrator Number four, prime and prime twice if necessary. Number five, apply acrylic as flush as possible at the cuticle area. And number six, file your cuticle area nice and thin. One thing which I forgot to mention, which I believe is just common sense anyway, is to remove any dust that you create and that's left on the nail plate. Because if you leave it there, it's only going to cause lifting. So there you have it my lovelies. Those are the six steps which you need to follow to ensure you get no lifting in your sets. If you happen to follow all those steps and still get lifting, then it's probably something that the client is doing in their aftercare or lack of aftercare or possibly that their nails are too long for their nail bed. So uh, I don't think it's anything you would have done. I think thereafter if you followed all those steps it's probably something that the client is doing and you need to look at that and assess that as well. So I really hope this video has helped you out with any lifting issues. Please let me know in the comments if you found it useful and leave me a like if you did. Also, for any of you who haven't yet, subscribe to my channel for more helpful content like this. So that's all I have for you, my lovelies. Thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all on my next video. Bye.